Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agadi. Welcome to a brand new day and brand new opportunities. This Friday, the day to turn off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. Turn yes. up, turn yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. I usually love the weekends because it's when I get to rest and, yeah. Yeah, but do other know, things have fun uh, last week you we were asking me what my idea of fun was and i gave you and some people were like is that fun at all it's not fun <laughs> you know sleeping you, can you be go fun. home you rest um you sleep you do a little bit of reading writing whatever else but mm -hmm. you know fun is relative as, but the thing is you have some free time on your hands to do what you want to do other than just what routine yes. uh, that you've always had. So that exactly. is fun, whatever exactly. it is. I agree with you. Mm. Well, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which Supreme Court grants local government areas financial autonomy. Another is raising awareness for children with congenital heart disease. And those are the hot topics. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Don't worry about the pressure or the responsibility. Just live in it, have fun, and when everything seems to be going right, just stay humble and remember your family. And that is by Roman Reigns. He is an American wrestler and a former American footballer. And he says this morning, don't worry about the pressure or the responsibility. Just live in it, have fun, and when everything seems to be going right, just stay humble and remember your family. I guess this is just telling you have fun. I mean, it's Friday, mm -hmm. so ensure that you have fun. I know most times we think of the worries of life, we think of the pressure that it brings. Um, you just wake up and probably you have so many bills to pay and you're like, wait, what? How am I going to get through the, through the day with all of this? But then uh, do not worry about the pressure because the, the truth is that life will sort out itself one way or, or, or another. And um, it's important that you bask in the moment, you have fun. And when everything seems to be going all right, don't think that's it. Remember to stay humble. Remember your family. Remember the people that are closest to you and just make sure that you're loving up on them. Yeah, I like the part of remember your family and mm -hmm. then stay humble because sometimes when things are going right, you, you tend to make new friends, think mm -hmm. about other people who are, you, you just met mm -hmm. at the time you met. And, and they're now in your level. Yes, that's your <laughs> level. But you forget that the people you uh, met before that level that you have reached are mm -hmm. almost like uh, the most important people. But one guru said, and I love, I love the way he said it, that you ask yourself the question, whatever problem I'm in, can I solve it? If yes, so why are you worried? If no, so why are you worried? Because, mm. because either way, you don't need to be worried. If you cannot solve it, then mm. you cannot solve it. It's just no, like how they say, no worrying is, is like a rocking chair. You're not moving anywhere. You're just going back don't and worry. forth. Mm. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> because <laughs> if you worry, you make it double. So mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Because first, you're even putting stress on yourself, which now brings anxiety, which can lead to depression. That's just a lot. But if you still, if you stay happy, regardless of everything, I think there's something about positive energy that goes into the atmosphere and just makes the universe works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And believe in a higher power, though. Yeah. Because it will always turn out right. Mm -hmm. That's in right. The end. All right, let's move over to our top trending stories this morning. Our top trending story, the first one says, court remands ex-power minister in prison. A federal high court in Abuja has ordered the remand of former minister of power, Saleh Maman, in Kujay prison, following his arraignment on a 12-count money laundry charge filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Maman pleaded not guilty to the charges which involve alleged money laundry offenses totaling 33 billion naira. During the court session, the defense counsel, Femi Ate SAN, requested the court to consider a bill application he filed earlier that day. 
However, Justice James Omotoshaw noted that the court had only stood down the matter to take the defendant's plea, not the bail application, and adjourned the hearing of the bail application to the next day, which is July 12. EFCC accused Maman of conspiring with ministry staff to divert approximately 22 billion naira related to the Zungeru and Mambila hydroelectric power projects. Investigations have reportedly uncovered properties in Nigeria and overseas linked to the suspects, along with significant amount of monies recovered in naira and dollars. Maman served as a minister of power from 2019 to 2021 under former President Muhammadu Buhari, who sacked him in a cabinet restructuring in September 2021. Maman was previously arrested and detained by the EFCC in May 2021. The court's decision to remand him in custody highlights the seriousness of the charges and the ongoing legal proceedings. What do you say about that young girl? Well, before he was arraigned, uh, before he even entered the court, he fainted. So, yeah. No, but isn't that, isn't that normal? I mean, you're hearing people saying, I'm in severe pains. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where it all started. Severe yeah. Severe pains. I'm in severe pains. And then pain. someone wore Stupid a neck things. brace yes. for, like, for like months because mm -hmm. he was in pains. Mm -hmm. There was another person who was supposed to be arraigned and he climbed a tree and sl slept on top of a tree. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think they just have these then, antics. Like, things every time to, they device new means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, there are two things to it. Uh, either these people have found a way to, to make just the justice system you know, not work the way it should work, and uh, they are being advised to do this. And are, it, it seems to be working for them. Everybody faints at any hearing, uh, any fraud hearing. But uh, there's also the other angle, which means maybe they actually, some of them actually um, faint mm. because they have a heart condition they may not have been taken care of. I'm, how, no, come, no, I'm just, how come it's at that moment? No, 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 moment? I'm just saying, because that's the, the highest form of embarrassment as far as, as far as I'm concerned. They that's, don't care. That's, that's the highest form of anything. But the point <laughs> I'm making is that while on one hand we feel that they have been telling lies so that um, they get away with yes. it, on the other hand, there's also that possibility, which means everybody, no matter how rich you are, you should invest in yourself mm -hmm. so much so that you take care of your health so that when there is pressure because no matter whether they care or not at that time there's some sort of pressure mm -hmm. maybe some of them really faint but why wait till that point i'm not going to give faint? them the benefit of doubt because i know for a fact that when things like this happen when you're being probed that's when our nigerian politicians devise new means to say oh i'm unwell Oh, I'm fainting. They come to oh, the not... stretcher anyway. Yeah. I know that. Or, or, cl or like crutches or something. Like they just try to do something to say, oh, this is the reason why, because of my health status, this is the reason why you cannot probe me. But when you were doing it, were you not, did you not know that you were there, not there fine? Was, there was one of them that came to the court with crutches. Yeah. And then when he left, he went to the house. I think it was one of his peers or somebody close to him mm. recorded it. As soon as he got home, he just left the crutches mm -hmm. and take these. And, uh, so <laughs> that's, that's the reason why no I would not give the benefit of the doubt. Even if you are fainting, come on, there are people, if you, look, if you look at other countries, maybe if you look at the US or something, for instance, there are people who are sick literally sick bedridden they will still arrest you they will have people in front of your um in front of your ward in the hospital they would you will still go through the, bind justice. You to the bed yes they would they would have they would put the handcuffs on you to the bed they will, you will still go through the rudiments through the justice system but it's only in nigeria oh it's not feeling what we're too sentimental because the truth is, when you're stealing this money, you should have thought about that. That's not sentiment at all, even. It's just, it's just a way they're doing it. And it's, it's not, an it's emotional like, blackmail from not, the politicians. It's not like Nigerians pity them and say, oh, he fainted, leave him to go. Nobody says that. But it just, just puts a clog in the wheel of progress of whatever case they're judging. Mm. And before you know it, the people have forgotten. Well, there are so many cases that have been forgotten yes. because uh, the, the delays have been there and all And that. that's the reason why they keep devising these means. It's just photo ops to say, oh, this is, this is how I feel right now. Please leave me alone. No, you still have to Shall face still the go consequences. Shall still and check yourself so that you don't faint on our hands. Because I know you're trying you to faint, give them the benefit you of doubt. Not, but, whether you faint or not, you will still face the Yes, you the should still face the consequences. But I'm happy that you know he's been remanded because it's important that 
we it's not i wouldn't even call it scapegoating but it is important that our justice system use this to make an example for others if we do not take the bull by the horn and say you know what idea. after a while he will make bail after he makes bail the court will drag and drag and drag for years and they at the end of the day we will not find anything how many of them are in, in prison some mm. of some ex-governor for instance last time went to the prison and uh, after some months they were freed for whatever reason they were mm. freed it's not like whatever they did, um, they had evidence that they didn't do it, but they were freed because of maybe technicalities or something mm. or something. They always find you, something. You remember that. So, oh, well, well. let's see whether they have any shame. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> the House of Representatives has urged the federal government, that's another um, hot topic, uh, they have urged the federal government to revisit the National Homegrown School Feeding Program, which was suspended in January 2024 due to various controversies. The National Homegrown uh, School Feeding Program initially launched in 2004 and relaunched nationally in 2016, aimed to provide nutritious meals to public primary school pupils using locally sourced ingredients to improve health, stimulate agricultural production, and boost smallholder farmers' income. President Bola Tinubu suspended all programs of the National Social Investment Program Agency for six weeks, affecting the uh, school feeding program along with the NPAR program, Conditional Cash Transfer Program, and Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program. This suspension has raised concerns about reduced school enrollment, compromised child health and cognitive development, and the disruption of smallholder farmers' income. The House adopted a motion by Muka Zakari, a member representing Turuani Federal Constituency, Kano State, highlighting the importance of the National uh, School Feeding Program in encouraging school enrollment, addressing childhood hunger, and improving students' ability to concentrate and learn. Zakari emphasized that while addressing the program's challenges is essential, a complete suspension could cause more harm than good. The House has mandated its committees on special duties and finance to invite the ministers of special duties and intergovernmental affairs, education and finance to revisit this uh, school feeding program and propose solutions for its future success. Zachary warned that the suspension is causing an increase in out-of-school children, posing a threat to the country's future and contributing to higher crime rates, insecurity and unemployment. Hmm. So I was just looking at the pictures and I'm like, were those really the meals they were being served at the time? It's one of the greatest scams, yes. uh, if you ask me. I lived look very at that. close. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Were they really feeding them those meals? Even you are, you're talking about feeding them. I lived close to a government primary school here in Lagos. I never saw one meal in that place. And then I used to work with uh, the governor's press call where we used to go around. At one point, we went to a particular school somewhere in Lagos. They were feeding them uh, boiled yam and egg. Wow. I was like, okay, that's good. And then someone told me that they have not eaten for, for months. Wow. It's just because the governor went there that well, day oh. that they were giving that food. So you hear stories like this and then Whoever is telling you that it is affecting their cognitive ability because they are not feeding in school and all that. I went to school, I didn't feed. It's but my parents, my parents could feed me at home. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a problem with that. Nobody in my time had a problem with that, that they needed to be fed in school. Mm. Yes, it's good to feed them in school. Uh, but That's when you feed them in school it. and then you come back home and you're sleeping hungry, uh, you're waiting for the next meal in school, which may not even mm -hmm. be as nutritious as we are, we are making it to, to yeah. seem. How about the kids, maybe your, your little brother who is not in school yet, or your little sister? Who yeah, that one will starve to that. Or you, I will stay in school. Instead of finishing primary school in six years, I'll stay till 12 years <laughs> because I have a meal that I will be, I'll be eating. And I don't think that program uh, was thought through and they're doing it for me, I just, feel, I, just, I just feel it was a way to siphon money out. It is still a you way. That's why that, you that, see that's the humanitarian um, office, the humanitarian ministry. There's just something about that that you cannot, like, where is the data? How do we know that these monies are being used for the mean, for, for the reason why it was being put out in the first place? These school children, most of them would not get this food. And even if they do, it's not going to be as frequent as possible and it's not going to be as nutritious as possible it's not so this this whole thing is just it's a i think it's a hierarchy of of scamming itself 
So there are different See, people on different some, some levels and different areas saying, that are getting the money out. Some of these people they are saying are not going to school. It's out of school children, uh, enrollment is coming down. Some of them can't afford uniform. Mm -hmm. If they can't afford uniform, they can't afford the So why don't you books. subsidize the So you're tuition. not talking about the books. You're not talking about tuition. You're not talking about, about uniforms. You're talking about the food, which a lot of people not just, like to do. you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a scam. It's a, it's a good intention, Initial, yeah. but... Um, I don't think it's ripe for for now. Our monitoring system is so bad yeah. that uh, we are just going to be spending money and mm. wasting money, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I feel like you would know when, when we're ripe for it, especially when we know that we have some level of accountability and transparency. If we have that, definitely, why not? It's great that you want to feed the kids you know, at school. Mm -hmm. I think they do that in the UK and other countries mm -hmm. as well. But they have a system that works. Mm -hmm. They have the data of these kids. They know that the monies that are being put out is really going for that reason, which is putting food for the kids, especially during their lunch time. But you cannot tell me that in Nigeria, where we cannot ascertain what you're using the money for, the person from the top to bottom, because everybody has their own level where they get their own money. And guess what? What is going to even be left for the kids are crumbs. So even if they have to give them any food, it's not going to be nutritious enough. That is even if they get any food in the first place. Just like what you highlighted mm -hmm. that, you know, it was when the governor was going there that day. That was even the reason why they had to, you know, put those meals there. There. Guess what? If the governor doesn't go there for years, they may not eat not for years. Really, yeah. There's schools that so I've never seen this. And school. it is important that I, for me personally, I feel like we're not there. Maybe we can get there in the future when we have some level of accountability and transparency. But for right now, it's just a scam. And I don't think there's any reason why we should be looking at this. If people can steal from prisoners, then who else can they not steal? <laughs> yes. Children. It could be anywhere. When the government budgets a lot of money for prisoners. And the rice, the beans, the fish, everything that is supposed to go to the prisoners does not get there even up to, up to 40%. It could mm. be anywhere. Hmm. Yes, at least the, for the experience I've had in prisons, yeah. there's still these things. There's still the soap that is <laughs> so for prisoners. There's still the toothpaste. There's still the the implements that they're supposed to use to learn a trade. For for someone who who cannot go out to get money, there's still and everything from so them. If they can steal from prisoners, what are students? <laughs> It's, I, oh my goodness, at least you go home and you eat. <laughs> we, we, we went to school where you would come back from school and, and they, have, they, have, they have kept a message for you that your food is in the farm. You will come to the farm mm -hmm. and, you, and you will eat the food there. We didn't die. I'm not saying people of this day should, should go through that as well. But if you have a program that will cater to the needs of students in school, you sh it should be holistic. Yeah. You know, I can come to school because the uniform is there for me, mm -hmm. even if I cannot afford it. This, the books are there for me, even up to the textbooks uh, that we can use. And everything that I need in school, then you're adding feeding to it. Yeah. Now you're saying feeding that we may never see, mm. or we will see once in a month. Once in a month? You're being generous. You might not even see it in years. But for me, if, you, if, if I was to advise or say what I would like, I think we should look at subsidizing education for these kids. I think in the past, um, government schools were almost free. I wonder what did free education. Yes, free the education. That's why we have so why are we not looking at that? Is it food that you give to life to eat? Like, that's <laughs> all. We should be looking at free education. We should be looking at investing in, you food know, having good, language. Though. It's not yes. said food is bad. Food is no, but good. But the way to go about it will mean that we'll be wasting money yeah. on, you know. Yeah. Have, have buy books. Have libraries. Things that would, you know, impact these children's lives. Not just saying they have to eat right now and, and that's it. And we're not even sure if they'll get it in they the first place. They will not place. get it. Not that we're not sure. We are sure <laughs> they will not get it. <laughs> All right, our final top trending story says federal government offers free CNG conversions for commercial vehicles. The federal government of Nigeria announced a free conversion program for commercial vehicles from petrol and diesel to compressed natural gas, CNG. This initiative aimed at reducing transportation costs involve agreements with various companies to provide conversion kits and installation at no cost for unionized commercial transporters. The Presidential Compressed National, well, Natural Gas Initiative, PCNGI, led by Michael Oluwagbemi, confirmed partnerships with five companies in the Federal Capital Territory to facilitate this conversion incentive program. The program addresses cost concerns of commercial operators, including members of unions like the Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, 
National Union of Road Transport Workers, and Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners. The program also extends to ride-share operators such as Uber, Bolt, and LagRide, offering a 50% discount on conversion equipment and free installation. This arrangement allows operators to pay for the equipment incrementally with no upfront costs, aiming to make CMG conversion more accessible and economically feasible. Over the next three months, 20,000 conversion kits will be distributed across 25 states within the existing CMG infrastructure. The initiative funded by a palliative budget and additional National Assembly allocations includes a monitoring mechanism to ensure proper conversion and enforcement of reduced transport costs, passing on the savings to Nigerians. All right. They're thinking. I know they said they were going to give like a hundred CNG buses. I don't know what happened to that. Um, but we're talking conversion now. Well, well Rumi, that's, that's a matter for it, another day. So <laughs> Because we've run out of time. There's, there's so much I want to say. If I started, I might not, I might not <laughs> press pause or, or full stop. Mm. But let's wait and see what happens. And mm. we hope that this is going to be palliative enough mm. for Nigerians. And reduce the cost of transportation. Because that is quite high at the moment. Almost everything you're spending is, is a lot because of petrol and diesel. So if the cost of transportation can be reduced, it would even maybe make food cheaper and some other commodities as well. But we'll see. Yes, see. All right, we'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>